All right, great. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to open the meeting. Motion approved. We need a second. <laughs> a second. Thanks, Rock. Is that all right? Ask, all in favor? Yes, I have to ask all in favor. All in favor? All right. All right. All right, perfect. Um, so let's kick off with, uh, and I know a bunch of these items in the new business. I know, uh, Dan, you covered um, a bit over email, so we may lean on you a little bit uh, to talk a little bit about what we have open, and then we can cover uh, the old business and any follow-ups and um, also hear from all the folks that are in attendance. Um, I'm not sure top of mind unless someone else can call out if one, any of the attendees are here to speak on the the Maranek Avenue bridge situation wasn't it miss chung who wrote the emails I, I believe so okay well dan this issue i feel like um it's been bouncing around a while and i know you covered some of it over email, but do you mind just kind of recapping kind of your thoughts or at least where, where it stood? Um, what we asked our traffic engineer to do was to <clears throat> look at the area uh, on the bridge, both sides of the bridge approach to the, that's one of the, yeah, it, it's the Metro North Railroad Bridge on Mamaroneck Avenue. I don't want to say Mamaroneck Avenue Bridge because we have actually several bridges on Mamaroneck Avenue. So I, when I saw it, I was, I was at first I thought it was the uh, the bridge over the uh, Sheldrake River, but it's 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 the it's the railroad bridge. Uh, we asked our uh, traffic engineer to take a look at the approaches uh, coming from uh, Mamaroneck Avenue, uh, Hoyt Avenue, uh, and Fenimore to. Uh, uh, make sure that the uh, what we could do as far as the signage to better uh, educate the motorists and provide warning to the motorists. Re really, the, I mean, honestly, the biggest issue, it's the the operators of trucks, because I mean, even someone driving the tallest SUV is not going to have a problem with getting onto that bridge. So it's really the uh, uh, making sure the truck route is properly Post, um, I had our engineer look at it. They prepared a report, which I had them uh, make a couple of suggested changes to, mostly about uh, uh, clearing up some language. Uh, the uh, what, basically what they mentioned is uh, they suggested some additional regulatory signage. Uh, on the, the bridge approaches, uh, on the bridge itself. And by, by regulatory, what I mean is uh, in a, that's signage that's designed in accordance with the manual of the Uniform Traffic Control Devices, which governs the size, the uh, colors, the shapes, and the text sizes of these signs. Because you know, I, I would hope that operators of especially 18 wheelers all have commercial driver's licenses and should be you know, paying attention to things like that. Obviously a little bit different when you're dealing with, uh, I think we have issues with uh, U-Haul trucks that uh, get stuck there sometimes. But uh, you know, really I think the biggest issue is with the, uh, uh, the, um, uh, the 18 wheelers. Uh, so basically it was additional regulatory signage on both the Fenimore Road Bridge, uh, the, Fenimore Road, Railroad Bridge, the Mamaroneck Avenue Railroad Bridge, uh, additional signage on Hoyt Avenue, denoting that the truck route, uh, there's a truck route uh, is a left turn onto Mamaroneck Avenue, uh, and that uh, we have an additional uh, warning sign of the bridge height on Hoyt Avenue. Um, that's uh, in accordance with our proper regulations. And uh, what I'm looking to do as a next step is to 
uh, see what type of signage uh, we can produce in-house through our public works department and what would need to be uh, done. We need to contract out because we, some signs we just don't have the capacity to make, but I, I, I don't know what the answer to that question is yet. Okay. Looks like um, this is still a work in progress, but we have the appropriate people engaged. We have traffic engineers and I'm not sure um, other than waiting for the moment and you know perhaps check in with them after the period of time just to see yeah, I mean, what else we could do. When I forward a copy of that report to you, it was you know, literally hot off the presses. I had only received it you know late last week. So Ryan. Yeah, go for it, Robert. Um, I just want to be sure someone is taking notes. Michael, it looks like you're busy. I, I am taking, taking notes. A, I am taking the minutes and already right. I'm, I'm waiting for that Zoom recording. It's hard okay. to get but I'm doing the best uh, I can. The second thing is, um, Dan, there was a recommendation about some kind of device where trucks can determine whether they ha have the appropriate height before they get to the bridge. Is that a realistic or possible solution? Um, in the report? There was a letter that we received, a, a request. Everybody remember that? Well, the, the, I well, I, I just uh, summarized the recommendations of the report. I mean, the the consultant did take a look at the letter. Uh, I can ask them to opine on that, but I I, I didn't. Uh, I only summarized the, the. Okay, it was some kind of apparatus where trucks can determine if they're under the necessary height before they get to the get to the underpass. Well, I'll, 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 I'll re-review the letter and uh, reach out to our uh, traffic engineer on that. Is it something similar to say what you'd see on, um, if anyone's familiar with the Hutchinson River Parkway, if you're traveling south is, uh, uh, by the- Mr. Rock is shaking his head. Maybe he can tell yes. us what it is. By the Maple Moor Golf co Course. Yeah. It, it, it's basically like a, a radar and it's, it says that uh, you are too high I'll check to see if that's uh, what they were talking about. I can uh, follow up with our traffic engine. Yeah. Robert, if you could hear me, it's a red laser. It's a laser that picks up north to southbound across the freeway. It picks up the height of the vehicle because it always gets any school bus going down. It sets the lights off. And they have a video camera system. As soon as you go on, the laser picks you up and then they can videotape you and the county police know exactly where the vehicle is to try to catch up before it strikes the Mamaroneck Road Bridge, because that's their lowest bridge on that section going southbound from 287. Would that solve the problem of uh, trucks not with the right height? Would it, would war problem? it would warn them, it would warn them, but you'd Dan would have to go back to the traffic engineer because they're professional. They would be able to tell you if you have enough distance. That warns you, like where Dan says at the Maple Moor Golf Course, you have about four miles before you get to a bridge that you're, um, I'm not going to say a mile and a half, two exits before you get to the bridge where you're going to get yourself in trouble. Yeah, but yep, even still, you have the first bridge, which is the, the uh, one. The North Street Bridge. The North Street Bridge is higher, yes. The, the mobile station with the mutant yep. mm -hmm. or the, uh, cell tower tree. Yes, yes. I mean, it's, it's distance. It's based on distance to warn you and try to and hear you to exit and avoid striking the bridge and causing a traffic nightmare and damage. Anyone else before we, uh, and I know she emailed me and Michael while we were uh, just discussing this, and I, I don't think that she wants to cover this issue, but perhaps she does. Um, it's actually John Gayette. Dan, I'd ask if you could promote to panelists, but first, just want to see if anyone else has a thought. I have a, I'm sorry, I have a quick housekeeping thought. Are the minutes approved after the meeting or before? I thought we approved the meetings, before, the minutes from the last two months. I thought we approved last minute's meetings, last month's well, meetings the beginning. before we, yeah, at the beginning, that's what I thought. But it's on the, it's on the end for this agenda. Technically, you don't need to approve minutes. Uh, you can just file them. But if you want to approve the minutes, that's, I mean, most, most boards do that. So, I didn't do that. okay. Uh, I, just to throw this piece of information, 
I was on other committees where they approved the minutes from prior meeting at the beginning of the meeting. When I got on the traffic committee commission, I was told that they approve it at the end of the meeting. So option. Can I call you back? What's yeah, uh I, I I I don't think that the whether you prove at the beginning or, or end is going to have any effect on whether the sun is going to rise in the east tomorrow. So, Brian, your call. Yeah, let's let's finish this train of thought. No pun intended. With the uh, Mamaroneck, uh, with the overpass, and then we could do it at the end. And then on a go forward, we could do it at the beginning. But as Dan said, it's not it's not the end of the world. Um, let's uh. Oh, thanks, Dan. Did you promote uh, yeah, Mr. Mr. Uh, yeah, that uh, she's right there and she should be able to speak uh, at any point. Hi there, it's uh, John Guyette. Can you hear oh, me? Oh, hi. Yep. Yes. Well, first of all, I just want to specifically thank Robert, uh, who actually came out to, uh, to Knowwood and Crown Court um, to look into firsthand uh, item number five on the agenda, which is the stop sign slash speed bump at Crown Court. Um, it, it really should be stop sign slash speed bump on no wood. Um, so, um, so I just wanted to acknowledge Robert. Um, also, I know a number of my neighbors on Crown Court are, are on uh, either the Zoom or have dialed in. Um, so I just want to acknowledge that they're on here as well. I don't know, Brian, if you're able to, to see uh, who's called in or, or who's zoomed in, but, but I know several neighbors on Crown Court are in attendance. And I'll be very brief. The, the, the issue is this, when you come off of Mamaroneck Avenue and make a left onto Knollwood, you go up a hill and there's a blind curve um, before you hit Crown Court. So um, there, there are a number of issues. One, kids who live on Crown Court, I have three. There's probably um, 10 kids on the block. When they're crossing Knollwood on their way to school, there's that blind curve where cars are coming around the corner and sometimes they don't slow down and it can create a dangerous situation for kids and pedestrians. The other issue is when cars are making a left turn out of Crown Court onto Knollwood. There's a stop sign on Crown Court. There's no stop sign coming up Knollwood. And so there's a blind left turn there. And in a couple of times, you know, I know myself and some of my neighbors have come close to actually being T-boned by a car that's speeding up Knollwood. So our proposal, and obviously, you know, we're not traffic engineers, we're just um, average Joes. But we think it would make sense to put a stop sign on Knollwood before Crown Court with some sort of paintings in the road, which would indicate one, a crosswalk, and two, the actual line that indicates where cars should stop. And so I think that's what we're you know, proposing, and we'd love to you know, work with whoever the traffic engineer is to, to have them come out. I know myself and some of my neighbors would be happy to meet with him and show him pictures of, of the curve and what we've experienced um, in order to take whatever next steps we need to uh, to push this forward. Thank you, John. And we can see um, there's nine attendees. We're just not sure which people are your neighbors. So if you happen to know, or better yet, if you're a neighbor of John and you want to raise your hand. Yeah, I see two people. Um, yeah, I know Juan is on and Alex. I'm not sure who else is on. Looks like a Linda. Um, <laughs> looks like everyone from Crown Court. Well, that's good representation. Um, Dan, can you promote them to presenter uh, or panelist rather, just so if they have any input, they could provide, they could speak as well. I can uh, give them permission to, to talk. Uh, yeah. Do you want me to uh, all four of them or, or one at a time? Let's just do all four. Okay. 
Mm. Oh. Okay, so uh, Alex and Juan, oh, uh, Alex just needs to unmute. And uh, they should all be able to uh, uh, to speak. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm I'm Juan Chio. Um, I, I live on Concord Nesta. John. Uh, again, we want to thank you for your time. Um, while some people may think this is a, a, a trivial um, item, um, I think the the people on Crown Court find that this is something that should be addressed for just the safety of, of both uh, residents that are traveling down Knollwood and, and for the residents on Crown Court. As John has mentioned, we have at least 10 children that are, are on the block and um, there is often times when drivers are coming up Knollwood um, and not paying attention. They, they mistaken Crown Court as Knollwood at, and they take the, the, the turn at a, at a high rate of speed um, before they realize they've come to a, the dead end. Um, so I think to John's point is we believe that if we have a stop sign um, and some um, road paintings placed on the roadwalk, uh, it would prevent this kind of mistake from happening and, and prevent um, a larger accident or tragedy from happening in the future. Um, we're open to, to show you know, the board or the, uh, your traffic uh, engineer uh, the situation. And um, we think that it's, it's a issue that definitely needs to be addressed. And once viewed, um, from a driver coming up Millwood, I think it'd be a little bit more understandable for, for the panel and for um, the group to kind of make a more formal and uh, educated decision on, on what needs to be done to kind of correct this, this issue. Thanks, Juan. Hi, I don't don't know. Um, I just this is Linda Chio. I wanted to say I really appreciate Robert's help uh, when he did come up uh, to um, meet uh, to see the intersection when we when we spoke to him the other morning. It really is very difficult both ways. I think John put it very well. Whether you're coming whether a car is coming up Knollwood and the kids are trying to cross and walk across, they can't see. And if they go too soon, um, they can be blindsided. And if you're trying to make a turn out of Crown Court onto um, you know, Knollwood, it really, it really is dangerous and you have to inch out very slowly. We have a lot of kids, there are some who are or who will be reaching the age where they'll be driving. And I'm really worried um, you're about when they start driving and if they just are less cautious when they make that, that, that left turn. So we've got young kids that are walking to school and then we've got kids who I think in the you know, next couple of years will be driving. And so it really is a corner that should be looked at. Um, I think Robert explained some of the issues that were um, involved, but I think a stop sign and as John says, a crosswalk um, can at least be uh, a way to start addressing uh, the concerns. Thank you, Linda. Hi, this is uh, Katie Gayette. Hi, Michael. Hi, Brian. Hi, Katie. Hey, Katie. How are you? I just wanted to say hi. I have a baby who is refusing to go to sleep, so I keep having to go upstairs. <laughs> but I just wanted to say hi and thank you for the meeting. Um, it's nice to finally get to talk about this stuff with you guys. And I'm so glad that the neighbors have joined in and that you've gotten to hear from them too and from John. 
So um, I think everybody's been bringing up the key points of it all that, you know, I had discussed with you over email, you know, mainly just about those little kids playing. Um, we, we get really scared for them <laughs> because as much as we tell them, they really just, they're not paying attention. <laughs> and these cars, they can come in pretty quickly and the, the kids can pop out of every corner. Um, there is a, a, I don't know if anybody said this while I was out, but there is a, a sign that says like slow children playing. Um, and I would prefer to, to keep that. Um, it would be nice to just add a stop sign and a crosswalk, but also keep the children play. Cause I just, I do think that that gives another good message. Um, so yeah, but I, I heard the tail end of what everyone else was saying. So, but that's about it, I think. Thanks, Katie. Mm -hmm. And then one second, Robert, just uh, this one more person, um, Alex. Uh, yes, hi. Uh, thank you for letting me speak here at the meeting. Uh, so I also live in Crown Court and I have a child and uh, I walk to school with him, Mamarnak Avenue School. And every time we walk, we have to be creative to cross Norwood at that intersection because it's really dangerous and also when when I drive, I had a number of close calls where cars where cars really swirl around me when I was trying to make a left turn. And we're not talking about speeding cars. I want to make a point. It's it's the cars that just drive like a regular you know speed under thirty miles per hour, and they see you at the crown court when they're already at the intersection because of that curve that John described in the beginning. So they are not able to see you. They And if, if it's somebody not from the neighborhood, they don't even know that Crown Court is there because they can't see that from around the curve until you're already on the intersection. So that's why I think the stop sign is absolutely necessary. Um, that's, that's all I wanted to say at this point. No, thank you, Alex. Mm -hmm. uh, Robert, yeah. There are two parts to this area that's a problem. One is Crown Court. I just want to emphasize that Norwood, when they go up the hill, it's a blind curve. By the time the car gets to the top of the hill, uh, kids or whoever's at the top can't see the cars coming and the car can't see anybody there. The, the other part, second part of this is the exit from 95. Um, so I spent about an hour at the on Mamernic Avenue, the exit 95. You all know where that is down the hill. And I would say this to you, nobody stops at the stop sign. And there, there are two stop signs before you get to the sidewalk that's, that's coming down Mamernic Avenue. Out of 50 cars, I saw one car stop at the stop sign. Everybody else rolls down. If there are no cars coming down by Maronic Avenue, they just shoot through, they do not stop. The only time someone stops is when is they have to stop because there are cars coming down by Maronic Avenue. But the point is that even when they stop, they're stopping after the sidewalk. You want them to stop before the sidewalk for the safety of the kids walking down the street. And Robert, um, there have been accidents there, um, as other neighbors have have witnessed. Um, I'm not sure if our neighbor Dan is on the call or not, but um, he witnessed two accidents there. Um, so, yeah, that's been a little problematic at the ramp. Go ahead. I, I just want to add one thing. It occurred to me that the village could make an awful lot of money just putting a policeman or traffic cop or someone at that location, they'd issue hundreds of tickets every day. It'd make a fortune. I just wanna make a comment about the request for a crossing guard. Um, at the top of my head, I looked at this area as well and I drive off that exit all the time. I'm not even sure where the crossing guard could be. They would, have, they would like pee in the middle of the street on Maronic Avenue, it's almost like no room when you're exiting off I-95 south onto the street. So the request for a crossing guard, 
I'm not even sure where they stand to stop the cars. And the cars come around. It's almost like you have to put the stop, you have to push the stop sign back because it's like a, it's a wave of cars. So the reality of getting a crossing guard there is is going to be difficult. Stoplight. Chris. Maybe uh, on a, on the, the throughway ramp. This is the exit. This is the throughway yeah, ramp that's... coming onto. Yeah, that's the Avenue. They'd, have to, they'd have to do that, and I, I, I can't recall ever ever seeing a stoplight at a one-way ramp. Uh, but <laughs> they'd have to make that decision, and it it would probably be based on you know relevant accident data. I I just don't know what the accident data shows, but ultimately, uh, it's the throughways off ramp. They'd have to make a decision about that. What, what about, sorry, this is John, not to jump in, but again, just painting a crosswalk that connects the sidewalks across the ramp and putting in an actual line marker on the ramp where the cars are supposed to stop. I'm not sure if that would completely resolve the problem, but, you know, sometimes adding road markings to stop signage, you know, adds visibility to the driver to, to sort of pull up instead of pulling through the actual intersection. Maybe it wouldn't resolve the problem completely, but it seems like a relatively easy ask um, to at least do something, you know, while studies are being done to perhaps explore it further. I think it's a fair point. I was gonna ask, Chris, is there any way we could quantify um, accident data in that area. I mean, I guess it's two parts. One on Knollwood, as it seems like anecdotally, there's been concerns, if not examples. Um, but also to John's point, um, which we actually have as old business as well as the Amerinic Ave and I-95 ramp. Um, do we have anything offhand? If not, could we, could we look at getting data on that? Um, yeah, we can look into it. I mean, most of the I-95 ramp accidents are before the stop sign. So when actually somebody stops and they rear end them and then the troopers come and take that report, but that you would probably have to request from the troopers because we'll get called no. on it, but it always happens on the ramp. So it never happens on Mamaronic Avenue. Now, as far as issuing tickets, I honestly can't tell you if we're allowed to. I don't know because that's technically the throughway ramp stop sign. So I'm not positive if we can issue the tickets. Like Robert was saying, we probably could make a lot of money over there. I see it too, because I live up the street. But um, the accidents in Oldwood, yeah, we can, I can run that and give you a total for next month or send it to you. I can, whatever accidents we have there, we can find. That's easy. Okay. I think that'd be helpful. Okay. Um, appreciate that. As well as like the context on kind of like what, whose domain is what over there. I know it gets tricky. Okay. Robert. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry, Laura, go on. I, I don't mean to interject. I'm I'm no go for it. You're on the commission. And, <laughs> but is there is there a way we could get an actual car count of how many cars are actually coming off that ramp every day and how much it's increased over the years? Um that's above my pay grade. I don't know. Yes, I would assume they could put something there, but I don't know if the state would have to do it. Yeah, I mean, the, the through authority would traffic. have to do that, traffic I, counts. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they have it, um, but it, it may be, it may be we can try and find it. I know we, it, it's, uh, we can certainly ask. I, I just don't know what, what data they have and when it was taken. It is clear increase. I mean, when you're on 95 trying to get off, sometimes I'll go all the way to Larchmont and turn back around or go into Nurichelle and come back through Side Street to get home. Yeah, I mean, you know, the way you, you try to overcome that is uh, you, you take measurements over the course of several days. So <laughs> you determine what they call the AD, AADT, the annual average daily traffic. So that will account for, you know, if there's some, like maybe there's an accident somewhere on 95, so a lot of people get off to try and, you know, 
find ways around it. But uh, I, I can certainly see what the two-way has. I I, uh, I can't promise you anything though. I've, I've never I've never seen it. So. Right, sometimes you get lucky though. I, and I there I also when you're coming off of Knollwood Avenue coming onto 287, I think that's the only place that I've seen an entrance with a red green light for you to come onto the highway. That's the only place that it's doing it on 287, and it it's not even a entrance to come onto a public road. It's actually an entrance to get onto 287 from the public road. They actually have a stop, like green light stop to enter. Oh, onto yeah, that's saying. I was saying. Was that as in in the town of Greenberg? It. Yep. Okay. There's one in the town of Greenberg, and I believe what they did there were paint a neon crosswalk, very large, oversized, so you can view the cross from the highway bridge into Greenberg going on to Terrytown yeah, Road. Right by, by the uh, the town library, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, we can probably, I can probably take a look at the Google Street View. I think that would have been probably something in combination uh, with. All right, but go sit down. Don't stand up like you're. Yeah, the, the, the DOT and uh, possibly the town. But I, I can I'm certainly go downstairs for a little bit. Okay. Yeah, because at the very least, if we could couple. What's that, Brian? Yeah, I'm going to try to. We'll create a, a yeah, you're gonna stay up till 9 p.m. Okay, daddy's on a phone call, so we've got to finish that up first. Okay, last area, huh. it's it's all, it's like no man's land, huh. you in the car. Um, just, just ridiculous. All okay, right, Ryan, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, is it okay if I mute you for a second or? Uh, hey, Dan, can you uh, can you hear me or see yes, me? Yes, I can, Lou. Okay, I wasn't I, sure. I, I, I was to... late to it, and I wasn't sure if I was on or not. All right. Oh, you're <laughs> on. I tried pulling you to panelists, but uh, I kept having issues. But you're you're definitely you're in the group. All right. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I, and what what they're saying about that that I ninety five ramp, Robert's absolutely right. I mean that they're they're pointed um, uh, they're pointed going with the with the downtown with the traffic going down toward town. And they're not they're not watching. I, th that really needs, I think, a uh, a crossing guard when this when the kids are going there. It's it's, uh, it's it's very obvious to me as well. But that's that. I would have to agree with Lou. I mean, that's I've I've lived here my whole entire life, and and walking from you know, the flat to the heights and back, that that area has always been barren, no man's land. You were on your own to cross this large area with no assisting. And for children to walk back and forth, if it was my own child, I wouldn't want them walking to school, which should be in a walking, it should be, we're a walking district. We can walk back and forth and it's unsafe for them to do so. Let alone in Washingtonville on the streets that we have, let alone on, on a main thoroughfare. Robert, from what you saw in the firsthand experience, um, just pivoting back a little bit, I know they're close by, but I just want to focus on Nolwood briefly. What would you advise or recommend, at least in what you've seen, as far as like what would help the situation? And if you don't know, it's fine. We could do more analysis. Uh, it's you have this huge sign that says children playing at children crossing as you're going up. No, you know, that helped. People ignore that. The pro I think what we've learned from Dan and from uh, Shannon is signs and traffic signals don't help a hell of a lot. Um, people are going to do what they want to do and disregard uh, caref careful instructions and caution. I don't know. What about what about a blind curve sign? Instead of children if, playing if, or if, if caution children are crossing doesn't get your attention, you know, I don't see what will. So it's fine. Yeah, I mean, uh, is what I mentioned is my, my general philosophy when it comes to traffic safety is uh, you know, motorists behave better 
when they don't have that level of comfort with the roadway conditions. Um, and it, that's something you could always look at is, you know, what, what can you do to uh, create that, and for lack of a term, it's a psychological effect on the drivers to, uh, you know, be more aware of their surroundings. Dan, given this area, I think that might be, um, you know, heightened, in fact, like amplified driver behavior, the fact that it's double yellow, where people like, which implies that it's more of a quote unquote major thoroughfare. What about coming up the hill, um, a speed bump or, you know, a sign indicating, give the slow children a sign indicating that a speed bump is coming and then immediately before that intersection, a speed bump or perhaps lowering the speed limit. I see the speed limit is 25, like maybe we force driver behavior. So as far as the, you know, the speed bump or speed hump, uh, we've been looking at establishing a pilot program in the village to, you know, have them at uh, certain areas. Um, and, and we can certainly look at this as maybe one of those pilot areas. Um, as far as the speed limit, so there's the, uh, the speed, the, there's the official speed limit, and then you can have um, your speed limit warning signs. So uh, our official village speed limit is 30 miles an hour, but we've established 25 mile an hour speeds on a number of streets. I don't believe we can go below 25 miles per hour unless it was a school zone and this area is not gonna qualify as a school zone because it's too far away from uh, any school. Now, what, you, what you'll see is when you have curves in the roadway, you can have a yellow warning sign uh, with an advisory speed um, saying, you know, the speed limit is, you know, officially 25, but you know, you were advised to go 20 or, or 15. Uh, but this, that's not a, that's not an enforceable sign. Dan, I know you mentioned that um, the stop signs tend to agitate drivers more so than anything. But in this case with Crown Court and Knollwood, we have one stop sign on Crown Court coming into the incoming traffic. Is there any data that backs like stop signs, like a all stop as being effective? Because well, as I, you're approaching- I, I, Oh, sorry. No, I, I, go on. The most effective data <clears throat> is the accident data, but I, I will harken back to something uh, Alex said, uh, Alex S, and that, you know, he said it wasn't much of a, it wasn't a speed issue as it was more of a uh, visual, like a, a geometry of the roadway, right. and being able to see everything properly. Um, you know, that's where I, I, I've seen, you know, stop signs uh, on those types of, where you have a geometric issue in the roadway, which you know, creates your know, visual obstructions, which prevent you know, adequate sight for the motorists to see what's going on in their surroundings. We I mean, can certainly take a look at that. Uh, but you know, I, I, I've, uh, what I've mentioned before is um, you know, what happens with uh, stop signs there. Uh, they're not designed as speed control devices. Uh, what winds up happening is people are typically back up to speed in you know, 100 to 150 feet. And when motorists have a perception that they lost time because of a stop sign, you know, they actually tend to drive faster when they leave that uh, intersection. So, um, but again, I, I think the, if there's a geometric issue, which is, you know, impinging the visual obstruction, I think that's something to take a look at. Can I, can I add something, please? Yeah, you, absolutely. You, we are, we're talking about adding speed bumps, which I, I, I fully support. Um, what I don't understand is why we can't lower the speed limit on, on side streets and residential streets below 25. I have an example to give you, which is Tammy Mill Road in Nourishell in the North End. That road 
runs off of North Avenue from the Hutch and it runs through the back roads to Quaker Ridge Road. They did a year study with a temporary speed bump in a highly residential neighborhood, much like Harbor Heights. And now they have a permanent speed hump there with a flashing sign for them to lower their speed. And the speed limit is 10 miles an hour. So for the safety and for the quality of life of neighborhoods like mine, like all of ours, like Harbor Heights, there, there are ways that we can figure out how to find a medium ground and find different alternatives and to couple and use different community studies to help foster what we need to do. Nothing is an impossibility and 25 miles an hour on a side road is far too fast, far too fast for anybody to make an appropriate stop. By the time they stop, the damage is going to be done, especially going up that hill because you're picking up speed to go up that hill. None of this is an impossibility. I, I see it done. I drive it. I see it. it. It's being done all around us. You know, I didn't, I, 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 am, I hopefully would see our, like, our speed limits lower, lower than 25 miles an hour is very fast. It's very fast for a side street, very fast. Very fast that you're allowed to do 25 miles an hour on, a, on an incline, you're topping 25 miles an hour by the time you hit the top of the road. I mean, those are items that we could suggest and we could, we could put, we can couple with our neighbors asking Nurshell, Larchmont, Harrison, Marinick. I mean, we could take, we, you could Google, you Google Earth, Tammy Mill Road and, and see the speed hump there and it's working. Cause it was used as a cut through and pretty quick cut through. And it, it, it reminds me of what's happening in the Heights right now and how the neighbors like to have that happen for them. And it has, and their speed limits down to 10 miles an hour and it's enforced. Is that something that we could possibly do as a pilot, as an inclusion? When you say you're gonna, there's a possible pilot program, can those can those steps be implemented to lower the rate of speed? Well, I think the, the pilot program that the board asked us to set up was uh, strictly dealing with speed humps uh, on you know selected roads. Uh, you know, we weren't asked to look at uh, whether we could lower speeds. Additionally, what was the road that road again? You said it's I knew it was Tammy Mill Road, T A M Y M I L. It's in the north end of Nourishell. It runs right off of North Avenue where the hutch is, and it cuts straight through to Quaker Ridge Road. Halfway through there is a permanent speed hump. The speed has been lowered to 10 miles an hour. There was a temporary speed hump there for over a year. I think, um, no, sorry, Laura, go on. No, no, it just, I, and I, you know, I was a culprit in that myself driving down that road until, you know, I realized that let me just take the main artery because we're infringing on somebody's neighborhood and obviously the speed bump is there. So it cultured me to go into a different direction, but to see the finality of it and that the community made sure that this happened for, for their for their children, for their neighborhood, and for you know a street that was probably never on the map before we we had the ability to you know Google Map anything or use MapQuest to use it as a cut through, and children can now cross the street safely, walk to school, walk to synagogue, go to wherever they need to go, and their their rate of speed has been reduced because. It's, it's a street, just, it's like driving through the heights and it, take a ride through it. You can see what, what the comparison is. But uh, my point is that 25 miles an hour is, is not in stone. And when you're topping to the top of a hill at, 
and you're going to have to drive 25 miles an hour. You're way past that by the time you hit the top. I was just trying to check out the street view, and I think uh, that may have been installed after the most recent street view, so I, I don't see it. Yeah, and it's not a bump, it's a hump. Yeah, no, no, I, I did not. I was looking at the, again, I was looking at the entirety of Tannermill Road in New Rochelle. Mm -hmm. And but, they uh, installed a permanent pole, yeah. you know, with a with flashing sign that says what your rate of speed is, and you need to slow down 10 miles an hour. Yeah, no, they, it looks like they last took uh, street level photography in 2018, so. Uh, I think it might have been installed after that, so I, I can't, uh, I don't see it here. I'll grab some pictures so you can see. Right. Well, I think, uh, I mean, we've had some great conversation. I want to, we have a lot of business to cover and a lot of attendees also here. I think a couple takeaways. One, Chris is going to be kind enough. He's going to be able to pull some accident data in that area so that we can quantify some of what um, the folks in the neighborhood are seeing. Two, we have the potential for um, submitting this area into the pilot program for the speed hump program that we have going on. Three, given the nature and kind of the geometric positioning of how this road comes up on the approach, we have the possibility of putting in stop signs or it makes more sense to potentially put a stop sign here and establish a hallway stoppage. And four, we can explore look further about you know how rigid the rules are or law is as far as having 25 mile an hour speed um speeds within residential areas and i agree with laura i mean at the minimum we should challenge it or at least make the recommendation that we should be more flexible as far as um limiting speeds within residential areas even if it's a law like i think it's our responsibility to you know look out for the safety and well-being of everyone in the public and just because it's the law doesn't make it right um so i think those are the four major takeaways i think from there i think we should move on to the rest of the business and um i know we'll have another meeting in two weeks but we can continue the dialogue and can you hear me yep hello we can hear you lou uh, i'm trying hang on oh come on um, so we have those four right, takeaways. Right. Um, is anyone right, opposed? To, there. Is anyone opposed to moving on to the, to the oh, next item of business? Going, damn it! I just wanted to say I think the stop sign at the top of um, Knollwood and Crown Court that I visited myself should be the number one takeaway from this uh, discussion. That's all. I, I think it'd be done. It could be done a little quicker than. Some of the others. Some of the others, yeah. No, I agree with you. I agree with you. I mean, I'm looking at that. I mean, you, there's so many factors that amplify, amplify people's speeds, whether it's the hill, whether it's the road leading up, Maranek Avenue coming off the highway. Like, there's countless things. And the fact that you have a dead end that's opening up into this major thoroughfare without a stop nice. sign or really anything aside <laughs> from a children at play, I think is just uh, unacceptable. So... All right. Um, well, thank you, John, Katie, Juan, Alex. Thank you for uh, taking the time out of your evening to speak with us. We appreciate it. And thank you, Robert, for heading over there. Um, I myself, I'm going to make an effort to go over there as well. You know, the rest of the commission, please feel free um, to, to check it out if you're unfamiliar with that area. I have an advantage over you guys. I'm retired. <laughs> That's okay. And we appreciate that. Your time is just as important as everyone else's. So we appreciate that. Um, I, I think, you know, we, we've had this, like, we might as well move on. I know a lot of folks are on the line. So oh, I can't get back to this goddamn thing. <laughs> it's okay, Lou. You, know, wanna... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might want to just mute him. Yeah. I, I... Thanks, Dan. Um, just working down the list as far as people that we have on the line, like let's give those people a chance. I know a lot of people are balancing things like childcare, et cetera. So um, Dan, if you wouldn't mind, could you promote uh, Elizabeth Good to panelists? Hi, Liz. 
Yes, I'm on. Hey, me? how's it going? Well, thank you guys for inviting us back to speak about Mamaroneck Community Nursery School and to Brian and Robert, who both came out this past, I guess it was last week, and took a look at our situation as well. Um, I know we spoke to the committee about this back in December, but we were hoping to get a stop sign um, by the nursery school on Tompkins Avenue where students cross every day. As we originally mentioned, there are about 140 kids at the school and there's a morning 8 a.m. arrival time, there's an 11.30 arrival time and dismissal time, and then there's a 2.45 arrival and dismissal time. And we have a lot of children who walk and we've seen some pretty dangerous situations with drivers who drive quite quickly in front of the school. And there is currently a crosswalk um, in front of the school and a stop sign that says yield to pedestrians, but it's not an official stop sign. So the directors of the preschool were hoping for official stop sign or some acknowledgement of children at play anything to get drivers to go slower and to recognize that there will be small children. And unfortunately, it's usually our youngest children who tend to be in the two-year-old range crossing the street. Thank you, Liz. And, uh, you know, as you mentioned, I had a chance to head over there a couple days ago and was able to see the experience firsthand um, with you know, our little friends within the community, uh, nursery school. Um, and even though it was raining, I mean, you know, it was apparent what kind of the issues and challenges that you saw, even in spite of the fact that, you know, the traffic may be reduced with the bridge closure towards the end of the road. Um, a couple things that I've noticed was that crossing diagonally there. So in that intersection leading up to the nursery school, um, there's a crosswalk only on one of the corners when in fact the other corner like it's arguably safer to cross at because it's not as close to the driveway from the nursery school and there's no crosswalk over there um i saw a number of folks just you know either crossing on that side or crossing diagonally just to get across the street and out of harm's way um further on that side of the street approaching the nursery school that same stop for pedestrian sign was difficult to even see, let alone adhere to. Um, you know, when I was there, there was a large GMC truck that was parked really like right in front of the uh, stop for pedestrian signs, which inherently is a difficult to interpret sign when you're driving a motor vehicle and trying to understand, you know, what exactly it means. Like as a motorist, does it mean I stop? Does it mean I stop for pedestrian? Like, what do I actually do here? Um, but even seeing that sign was difficult. Um, I saw cars just frequently speed through anyway. Um, that was the most frequent occurrence. Like, and we're talking large trucks, large vans, especially in the morning when, you know, more of the folks driving like the utility vans and pickup trucks are more likely to be out and heading to work. So I saw a number of those types of uh, vehicles just speed through the intersection. And I also saw a lot of confusion from people. I saw cars that were looking to quote unquote do the right thing and then weren't necessarily sure because, you know, as in a previous meeting we discussed is the fact that the sign is difficult to make sense of in and of itself. And then if nobody's there, are you supposed to stop? Am I not supposed to stop? Like really, what are we supposed to be doing here? Um, so I agree with what um, Liz and, you know, I'm sure uh, Robert may have observed the same, but those are some of the things that I saw. Uh, Robert, do you have any comments from what you saw firsthand? I have two things to say. One, Dan brought up uh, earlier, a couple of months ago, about the hatched pattern, uh, narrowing the street. He thought that might be um, at a safety issue. The other thing is that Laura, one of the administrators there pointed out to me, that as cars are going up Tompkins from the parking, you know, from the Phillips parking lot, and they get to the point where the children are walking across the crosswalk, cars stop to allow the children to cross. She mentioned that cars behind them that have stopped don't understand why the car in front of them has stopped and try to go around them. 
So as they're going around them fast, that's where the, that's where the safety uh, for the children occurs because the cars behind them don't see what's ahead. They just want to get where they're going. I don't know what the solution to that is, but that was pointed out to me as something that happens often and is a real danger. Dan, can you promote uh, Laura to panelists? Hi, thank you so much. Um, just wanted to chime in. I'm partners with Liz on this. And yeah, I just wanted to say that I had firsthand seen um, a very close accident that was just described. What happens is the first car is doing what it should be doing and the car behind them is very confused and there's, it's kind of difficult. There's a prior to that, there will be a sign um, that does show pedestrians walking a couple, I would say maybe half a block forward. But at that actual intersection, if we had a big sign that said children crossing somewhere right there, I could see that those cars that were second in line wouldn't be confused and would therefore know this is why this car is stopped. But I have seen a car pull around really quickly and have a near miss with like a two-year-old and their parent. Um, and it was, I think, you know, one of the catalysts for us uh, writing in. I think, you know, we talked about maybe like high visibility, high visibility signage, like in a, like a very you know, large and a very obnoxiously bright color or something like that. Yeah, that would, I think that would be great. And we loved the hash, we, right now the, the crosswalk is a little faded. Um, and we thought that your shading idea would be great. And then just even like someone had mentioned that something yellow always helps. So if we could have signage on either side that just says children crossing, um, there is slight elevation right there. And then there also is a, always a ton of cars parked alongside because there's an apartment building there. So it's street parking. So it's just so much of a visibility issue really. Thanks, Laura. Um, does anyone on the commission have any have any thoughts? Yeah. So, Dan, I um I have a couple of ideas. I mean, I think for one, I think those signs for the stop for pedestrians. I mean, I would be in favor of converting those to regular stop signs. Secondly, the signage as far as notifying drivers that there's um, a school or you know whatever language we want to use on the signs in the approaches to the school. So like in yellow and just notifying them of what's coming. And then thirdly, you know whether it's with the hatch pattern within the street or um, some sort of constriction on the uh, lanes to slow people down. I would honestly be in favor of all three of them, um, but curious for what other people think. I, I do see that there is a, a Mr. Grant who also has his hand raised. I don't know if it's, if it's on this item or not. Um, let's promote them to panelists and uh, if it's on a different item, then we can uh, put them back to attendee. Okay. Grant is, is from um, North Barry and... Uh, oh. Okay. Yes. Hello, yeah. everyone. Uh, this, is, this is Tim Grant. I just, uh, I'm a neighbor on the call for the North Barry item, but as I live in this very neighborhood, I just wanted to voice support for the stop signs on this street because uh, we have a very similar issue on North Barry on my block where we have an existing crosswalk. We have signs saying children at play. We have signs instructing drivers to yield to pedestrians in the crosswalk, yet nonetheless, none of those none of those are respected none of those do the trick so based on my experience on my street and, and knowing this exact intersection well knowing the school well uh, i just wanted to voice support uh as a neighbor for for the stop sign proposal thanks tim you're welcome dan can we make those recommendations do you have any qualms with uh, uh i mean you know, I, I think the uh, I can certainly you know see what's available in the manual of uniform traffic control devices. 
I, I, I have to imagine that signage specific to nursery schools, there's gotta be some pretty good signage in there. Uh, and that would just be a recommendation to, um, you know, uh, the village staff because that wouldn't require board action. Okay. Uh, and with the hatching, that would be the same, it would just be a, uh, 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 that's not a regulatory item so that the village could look at that. Uh, I mean, if there's a request for a stop sign that does require board approval, uh, again, you know, I always try to harken back to what the accident data shows because, um, you know, I think uh, what you what you see is, and I think uh, when you have people stopping, you may have uh, an uptick in uh, rear end collisions. But you know, I think you'd want that would be again that would be a recommendation that comes from the uh, traffic commission to the board of trustees because it does it does require board approval. Well, I think we have the president. We have the signs there already. Um, it's it's a the 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 law in New York State is <clears throat> you have to yield <clears throat> to pedestrians uh, in the crosswalk, no matter what side of the crosswalk they're they're on. So mm -hmm. it, that's something that you can uh, that's something that's a violation, regardless. Even if we didn't have the sign there and you had a crosswalk, that's still a violation. Um, it's it is a warning sign uh, that you're supposed to technically if you're supposed to yield, but uh, you know stop is I have no problem with that 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 signage myself, but um, uh, and that's not a regulatory sign because that's something that's in, that's enforceable through state law. And then this wasn't broached, but what about um, a crossing guard on that corner? Uh, on the by the by the by the school, mm -hmm. I mean, again, that, that that's more of a operational decision for uh, the village to look at. I mean, yeah, it requires a you know dedication of funds. Um, I, I, you know, for the most part, and, and maybe um, you know, there, someone else can speak to it. I, I think are most of the children using that crosswalk accompanied by a parent. But I can't imagine that I mean, it's, and we do have crosswalks in other locations. Yes, yes, they are. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, we, we, you know, we have a nut, we have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of intersections in the village. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we just can't have a crossing guard at every single intersection. Um, plus, I think, you know, I don't know what the uh, hours are for um, uh, the school. It's, it gets, there's a level of complexity to deploying school crossing guards. Not noted. All right, can we start with a, a recommendation of um, the signage, like in accordance with what the manual for traffic safety specifies for nursery schools or younger children in general, as well as like the um, the uh, street hatching, and then I think the stop sign perhaps we table it temporarily. This is Elizabeth Good. I just had one other point. We had wondered if we would be able to, during school, drop off and pick up hours, put one of those yellow, you know, children crossing signs or stop signs, like in the middle of the crosswalk to slow people down, if that would be legal, if we could speak to the police about it, or if, if that would be something that would be an option as well. Dan, we were trading emails on this one. Um, yeah, I mean, um, it's it's a the village's uh, crosswalk, so you know we would have to make decisions on that. Um, the one issue I would have with uh, giving someone else permission to put something in the in the crosswalk is, uh, I, you know, if if you forget to bring it in one day. I, I would feel there's a very large likelihood it would get hit, it could damage something, it, it would, you know, it would be knocked over onto the curb, it could, there could be issues with that. Um, you know, we do have some of those uh, signs in the village center uh, along Mamaronek Avenue. Um, uh, and I think in some other locations, but you know, it's, um, it, it's a, it's kind of a narrow roadway. I don't know if you have enough 
you know, space to really safely accommodate something like that. Uh, and like I said, I'm, I'm just, I'm concerned about the, the safety of a sign like that because I, I could just see it getting knocked all over the place. Understood. Uh, yeah. But you know, like I said, children of play, I think is, you know, we, we talked about, you know, children of play on Norwood. Yeah, and, and that's one of the problems that you see with, with signs and uh, children of play signs are supposed to be located around playgrounds because that's where children are playing. In residential neighborhoods, it should be understood that, you know, children are playing in their yards. Uh, but, you know, that's one of those signs that tends to get overused and, and misplaced, but I think the, uh, uh, you know, the, the uh, horse is out of the barn on, uh, on that one, the proper application and how it should be used. Well, let's, let's start with like to see what type of signs would make sense to notify drivers, whether it's children or player, as you said, for nursery school might be well covered with something uh, with strong verbiage and the street um, constriction or hatching, however it's done. Yeah, um, so I, I like the high visibility signage because um, it's gonna stay cleaner longer. It's more noticeable than uh, a white sign or a, a yellow sign. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll see what's, uh, what type of uh, options there are. Okay. And this might be a little bit, we didn't discuss this, but what about you know the speed hump in the approach coming up to the intersection? So like that street has a pretty long runway until you actually reach the um, entrance of the school. It, it might be an appropriate location. Um, you know, we, they, they're not really designed to be on uh, certain roads that carry significant traffic or designed to carry traffic from one major road to another. Um, because that's, you know, those are gonna be the streets that are most frequented or most used by emergency services that need to get quickly from point A to point B. Um, Tompkins uh, is not that road. Uh, it's not designed to be that road. Um, and, uh, you know, now, especially with uh, uh, the uh, Tompkins Avenue bridge being out, uh, you know, there's even less, uh, propensity for uh, some of that type of traffic. Okay. Let's start with a couple of these items and we'll still have this on the docket for business. Um, anyone else have any input? Liz, Laura, any, any thoughts that you guys have anything further? No, just to thank you again for looking into this for us and we appreciate it. Yes, and if, okay. if we can do anything to help, um, like if there's you know a video we could take or if you want someone to sit there during the day and monitor it um, and kind of report back, I mean, we're, we're so willing and, and ready to help in any way we can to um, make this better for the kids. So just, you can count on us to do any of that on the side. Ryan. Sorry, Jess. All good. No, thank you, Laura. Thank you, Liz. No, I, I saw it firsthand. I think Robert saw it as well, um, the, the situation. So we will help. All right, let's, um, let's we have uh, Deirdre on the line. Thanks for hanging with us, Deirdre. If you don't mind promoting her, Dan. Hi, Deirdre. I'm sorry. I just was. I just was joining it late. I'm. Um, I live around the corner from Crown Court, and I was just wanted to. Um, I don't know if you're still talking about that issue yet, but I just wanted to say that I agree that we could definitely use a stop sign there. No, oh, thanks, Deirdre. We. Uh, it, we, uh, we. We agree. We have a couple of uh, action items to follow up on, including stop signs and investigating the, the, the speed limit, perhaps an entrance into the pilot program for a speed hump and uh, 
you know, better signage. We have a couple of things in motion. We covered that. Uh, we covered that for like the first hour. So thank you for yeah, I, I apologize. In. I joined a little Solved late. But thank you very much for considering all that. Goodbye. Bye bye. <laughs> thank <Solved> you. <laughs> and then I, I, I think just the other folks on there, like we have, uh, Oh, we have a new attendee because Ryan, he is, uh, I think he was demoted to attendee. Alex, he spoke on the Crown Court. Lou, I believe he might have been demoted as well from Dan. Um, oh. But I think uh, Mr. Tripoletti uh, was about uh, South Barry Avenue. And okay. I can't, uh, Guyane Drive, I think. Cool. You mind promoting him, Dan? Absolutely. Hi, hi! Thanks for uh, listening to my um, submission here. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm talking. I call submitting something about uh, South Barry Avenue and Guyon Drive. This is the intersection right before the South Barry Avenue Bridge, which you can see the uh, the harbor from. And there's a few there's a few traffic issues there. Basically, what I'm looking for is uh, no parking signs near the intersection. What happens here, the uh, South Barry, as you know, is a steep hill and Guyan Drive on the western part of the intersection uh, that leads into my street is very narrow. So coming down the hill and making a right hand turn, if there's par cars parked before the intersection, it's very difficult to make that turn. It's, not, it's, it's like a 60 degree angle between South Barry and Guyon. So it's not really a 90 degree turn. It's kind of like a, it's a sharp turn. So if there's a car parked on South Barry, it's very difficult to make the right hand turn onto Guyon Drive, which makes it even more difficult. The street is so narrow. And a lot of the people that go fishing and uh, gardeners and <clears throat> even the residents park on Guyon Drive, you really have to inch your way onto Guyan Drive off of South Barry. So there's a problem with getting potentially rear-ended from cars speeding down South Barry Avenue. The other problem here is when you're coming, when you're making a left-hand turn onto South Barry from Guyan Western side, if there's a car parked on South Barry, it really can't see the cars coming down the hill. And you have to inch your way out and to make that left-hand turn. Now, there, there is a no parking sign on this intersection. It's between the bridge and Guyon Drive, and nobody parks there. Uh, but that no parking sign is in the wrong spot. Um, you know, it should be uh, going uphill where, you know, it's difficult to make that turn. And it's difficult to go into the street because it's so narrow. And th there's, there's, two intersections, there's two intersections into my neighborhood. One is Stewart and South Barry, and then the other is Guyan Drive. Guyan Drive is very narrow, like I said, it's the width of two cars, but the one on Stewart and South Barry is probably double the width, and it has no parking signs at, on all the corners. So I'm, not, I'm just asking for no parking on South Barry between the, the house driveway and mm. Guyan Drive, and then some type of no parking sign before on Guyan Drive, before the intersection. Uh, especially when there's fisher people fishing, it's very tough to uh, get around that intersection. But there's never any cars parked between Guyan and the bridge. Go for it, Robert. This came up last year. Um, Mr. Trifoletti, are you the person that brought this up last year? Right. You had a three okay. That's that's fine. Uh, I'm going to try to solve the problem. I think there's a simple solution. There's not a lot of uh, parking on that street to remove a couple of parking spaces. I don't see that as a big problem. If that's going to make life easier, not going to cost anything. Let's let's do it. Yeah, that's great. That's my suggestion. I agree with Robert. The only thing um, I think we'd probably want representation from other folks that live 
in close proximity to there, like the surrounding houses, just to- We have, we have about 45 people in the homeowners, uh, the homeowners um, association. So how would you like to hear from them? Dan, in the past, like when you've mentioned, let's say, you know, I remember there was an issue on, uh, I think it might have even been North Barry with respect to um, visibility. And um, we had a homeowner approach us and talk about removing parking and then may have ended up being a bigger situation in which the voices of the other residents weren't necessarily heard. Like, do you have a recommended approach? Like, would it be like a petition or just dialing to meeting or writing to us? Like, what would you okay. recommend? Yeah, I, I, I think there, there's two approaches. The first is we could just, you know, say, you know, we're considering, we can, you know, identify neighbors within X number of feet and say, we're considering something. Um, what are your, you know, the traffic conditions going to be on this date? If you want to attend to get your thoughts, this is what you do. Um, the second uh, approach, and I think uh, if there's an organized homeowners association, um, it, it may be better to have them kind of do that legwork for us because, you know, they do uh, have, and I, sure. I don't know, Trifoli, Trifoletti, how organized and active your, your neighborhood association is. Yeah, uh, it's, clo it's close and we have an upcoming meeting. Yeah. So that's easy, that's easy to discuss and show the people. Yeah, it, it, that may be a, be a better approach. Uh, I think also because it's, uh, uh, it, it may, be more of a sense of buy-in and community, getting the community stakeholders involved. Sure, I agree. Groups, yeah. Yeah, I, okay. I agree Not with that. Steve. Yeah, no, I agree with that. That's a good suggestion. Yeah, that's, I agree with Robert. Like this is low hanging fruit. And if it's gonna make things safer and like more convenient, like let's just do it. <laughs> As a, a uh, just one item and, um, you know, there is a stop sign on Guyon Drive as you approach um, uh, South Barry Avenue, uh, by law in New York State, unless it's otherwise signed or metered, you cannot park within 15 feet of a stop sign. And you know we, we don't we can't we don't put that sign up. Yeah. Well, we, we we can enforce it, but we don't we're not going to sign every single stop sign with that. But uh, that is uh, it is one of those other. Uh, items in New York State uh, vehicle and traffic law that uh, we, we do have in our back pocket. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, good. Then I'll, I'll talk to our the president and the board. We do have an upcoming meeting. I can have them put something together and, and submit it to you in letter form. And I'm sure we have letterhead on our, our, on our um, association. Here you could email it, whatever is more convenient. Yeah. You know, you're sure. taking this on. So thanks, Stephen. Yeah. Like we agree with you. Just want to make sure that yeah. um we don't step outside like someone may have a qualm for a I, I agree. There's a there's a new resident that lives on that corner, so I fully agree. All right, cool. Okay, good. Yeah, thanks for your time. And um I'll I'll handle it from this side and get it to you as soon as possible. Thank you, Steve. Okay, thank you guys. Right. Okay. Bye-bye. I think that covers all of the, um, the public items. So um, we can just shift back to the new business. And uh, I think this should go pretty quickly, as I know Dan had some comments on a few of these, including uh, we'll start with the Fenimore Road. Let me bring up the email from Dan. Where on Fenimore Road are we talking about in this case? I was the one who brought up the agenda item as a resident. Um, Prospect Avenue and Fenimore Road coming up from Harbor Island. You're going west, I believe, is the direction. So there's a there's a hill going up. When you try to cross that street, it's like impossible. You can when you're looking to the left as the cars are going up. There's a car blocking it, and you cannot see that car. A car coming until like you know. Pretty close to you. Um, and I know Michael, it's the, is that, was that the correct place that you were yeah, talking about? Yeah, it's the Fenimore Prospect intersection. 
Yes. Uh, if, if you want, what I and I, I told you about what we're doing. We're, we are yeah, doing. I have the I have the notes, so there's not much room for discussion. Well, but what what I'll do just to um, for the uh, commission's edification is I will uh, forward you all a copy of the uh, initial analysis done by uh, our traffic engineer, and I can send you a copy of the sixty percent design plans to show you how we're effectuating it. Uh, but uh, like I mentioned, we're trying to uh, see if we can use some existing contracts that we have in place uh, uh, so we can use them with their pricing because I imagine it's pretty much be the same. We call big unit items uh, so we can shave some time off and uh, uh, not have to go to a public bid process because we already did uh, for this type of work. And uh, it was uh, for a, a sidewalk replacement that we're looking to do on uh, Waverly Avenue between the Sheldrake River and Mamaroneck Avenue is one contract. Dan, Dan yeah. the project uh, you're considering on Fedemore, is this the one that's going to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars? No, I think the estimate was somewhere around $90,000. But what I did was I provided a copy of the uh, bid award uh, for that uh, Waverly Avenue sidewalk. Uh, job to our traffic engineer, and I asked him to compare the uh, bid units to uh, uh, see. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> I was uh, seeing uh, right there. <laughs> yeah. Um, to compare the bid unit items to uh, uh, see uh, what the what works and uh, how or what the uh, pricing would be based on that. So uh, I think they're soon to finish the 100% design and I should have that uh, relatively soon. Like I said, I, I, I will forward a copy of the uh, uh, the initial report and the 60% uh, design plans to you guys. So just so I understand that that contract or that, that you have um, with that company, does that include a stop sign for that spot at corner or are you talking about reconfiguring the whole intersection? At um, Avenue the, and um, Benamore. I, I was just looking for the usual stop sign, like everyone else in the, in no, the, I, I, in the neighborhood. No, I think it's it's going to eliminate some of the parking. Uh, okay. Build a what we call a bulb out, so it'll be uh, an extension of the curb, so it'll actually make the crosswalk shorter in distance, and because you're uh, narrowing the width of the roadway that should have the effect of also slowing the traffic down. Okay, great. So it's a, it's a big project and yep. I'm good. Thank you. Yep, thank you. All right, cool. So um, the next item is the uh, recommendation or joint recommendation rather from uh, the fire and police departments on the uh, issue for the, uh, the French American School and Ralph Ab. Um Andrew or Chris, do you wanna kick things off or comment on this? Chris, go ahead. All right, I, I can speak because I, I sent the letter from the fire department as well. Um, yeah, it's an issue because at any time you can have 150 cars there at a standstill. I mean, it's insane. I, I was there to one day and I didn't know what to do with people. Um, so the major issue as I think Lieutenant God has sent to you guys was to make Ralph Avenue one way all the way coming off a new, then that also would uh, be able to free up, get those buses out of there. Cause I sent a photo. You can have anywhere from four to seven buses there in 15, 20 minutes that are picking up for the French American. Then move them up to uh, Monsignor Goodwine or Underhill as you would call it. And I monitored for three weeks, those parking spaces on Underhill, they're all, employees of the French American school. So some days they park there and then some days they park um, they park in the parking lot. So I was able to figure that out when I ran the plates and everything. So I, I think it's an easy fix if we can get it. I know Matt had spoke with Lieutenant Gata and uh, I don't know if he talked to you, Dan, and he suggested the same thing. I think it was discussed in the past. Yep. No, well, uh, they, did, they did the project before. Yeah, I had um, uh, Lieutenant Gatta met with uh, Matt Carmody, our traffic engineer, reviewed everything. I think uh, Matt is supportive of it and he agrees with that approach. 
So if that becomes a recommendation of the uh, traffic commission, I can uh, write up some of those regulatory changes for the board of trustees. No, I'm in favor. I think perhaps we should notify the folks on the block too of the proposed yes. change, just as a heads up. But like if you know the police department, the fire department, the traffic engineer, like I'm not sure. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, pretty good consent. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think. I um, add to, sorry, Dan. I can add to speaking with some of the neighbors. I mean, obviously they would be excited because you know a fire truck can get down the road. Maybe if we, sh you know, shuffle a little, get those buses out of there. When the bus is there, you can't get anything down there. So fire truck would end up pushing cars out of the way. I mean, people in cars picking up kids will move, but you know, it, it's just insane. But I, I think a couple of the people were on board with it because they were just afraid that, you know, we have one party that lives down in the corner, Gertrude and, and uh, Ralph, that a young woman that had a heart attack or stroke, and if we can't get to her, if she has another one. I mean, there is no way getting her. Even if you came in Gertrude the wrong way, Forget about it. So I, I think the neighbors, yeah, we can inform them. I think they'd be on board with it anyway. Yeah. I spoke to about four of them. Yeah, and um, for Officer Jager uh, information, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, Mr. Uh, for Brian, we, uh, uh, you may have spoken with uh, Tina Moresca, who is the, um, uh, I think she's now the chair of the Safe Roost to School Committee. Mm -hmm. She lives in this area. I think she's, I think she might be familiar with some of the things we're discussing. I think I may have mentioned it to her as well when uh, uh, I put you in connection with her. No, thanks for that, Dan. I'm going to see her, uh, I believe it's next week, next Wednesday. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll probably be there. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Chris. Um, <laughs> the other thing I'd like to do is just to back Chris up with this also, the probability of a emergency with the fire department please just take into consideration next month, which is only a week and a half away, is one year after we had a second alarm building fire right at that corner. And we needed hmm. access immediately, rapidly. Thank God we had no injuries, but we did have heavy damage to the building. We were able to stop the fire. And exactly what Chris said, vehicular access for the fire equipment was imperative. This was 10 o'clock in the morning. If that changed by two hours, you could have had some serious issues of getting fire apparatus, hose, water, ladder trucks, getting us in place right away. And the building was an occupied structure that once again, thank God, everyone was out safely. And we were able to do our job yeah. expediently and rapidly and safely. You know, just you know, the, the history of fire apparatus over the last hundred years is that they aren't getting smaller. No, they're getting a little bit bigger, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. So thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. And then the um, the last item of new business is the uh, Harmon Drive in Rockland Avenue. And Dan, you commented on this one of the fact that um, at least like the intersection falls on both jurisdictions between the town and the village. But yeah. anything you want to cover there? Well, I mean, what, there were there are two you know separate items. First was the truck traffic on Harmon. Um, and there's there are already restrictions on the Tanum Marinick side where they uh, prohibit truck truck traffic in excess of five tons. Um, ours is more stringent. We actually say no truck traffic at all. Um, I mean, but except I think except for uh, local deliveries. Um, you know, the second item was you know a sidewalk on on Rockland. I think I mentioned some of the. Um, uh, we do have some site ownership issues along Rockland Avenue, uh, but again, you know, there's also your know, priorities with other sidewalk projects that we're uh, looking at right now between, uh, you know, the uh, improvements in and around Mamaroneck Avenue School, uh, improvements along Old Post Road, uh, Orienta in Washingtonville, uh, along Old White Plains Road. So, I mean, we could certainly look at it and add to the capital plan, but you know it would be, it would be prioritized with several other of those uh, of those initiatives, and that was part of the memo that I did provide to you, uh, the draft memo about uh, some of the capital costs that uh, you're know, looking at over the next several years if you know uh, you know there's a commitment to fund these these projects.
But go for it, Robert. Um, Dan, we've had a lot of discussion about Rockland Avenue starting from Waverly, where there's no sidewalk, it's curved street, very hazardous for kids walking to school. Going all the way down Rockland through to uh, the town center and the high school. You, you recommended some, some suggestions to trying to clean up that area. Clearly, it's, it's never gonna be a, a real safe location, but we're gonna try to do what we can to make it safer. Where are we in terms of some of your recommendations or suggestions about that whole starting from Waverly all the way down to the town center on Rockland? Um, well, I, I think you already you you do have sidewalks on the um, I guess it would be the south side of south the side. not not on Rockland from from Waverly to uh, to, the uh, to Palmer Terrace. No, yeah, that, no, no I, I, well, you you mentioned the town center, so I, I was right. just you know okay. thinking of the section between uh, adjacent to um, uh, Sarah Newman. I think Correct. there are sidewalks over there. Yes, uh, you do. Yeah. Um, again, I mean, this is something we can we can you know start having our engineer look at to prepare a conceptual plan and estimates. Uh, but uh, again, it would be something that uh, we'd have to look at in the context of uh, a long-term capital plan and what are the priorities for sidewalks. Um, I think we've identified, uh, you know, the implementation of projects associated with the Mamaroneck Avenue School walking assessment as um, priorities. Uh, we've already received grant funding. Uh, we're going to apply for more grant funding in, in future years. Um, you know, part of that we also uh, looked at uh, uh, improvements along uh, Old White Plains Road, which we have not. Um, uh, started any conceptual work on yet because we're waiting for several uh, items to uh, uh, free up, which included uh, the completion of their bridge project last year that the uh, throughway was doing and kind of a retor return to a post-COVID uh, traffic pattern to get accurate uh, traffic data. Uh, we also have the uh, implementation of the RINAC walking assessments. Uh, we've applied for grant funding to replace the sidewalks on Halstead Avenue. Uh, then there was, you know, the creation or the installation of a sidewalk on Old White Plains Road uh, to connect, you know, the kids walking from Orienta to the high school and the middle school. Um, it's, I can certainly ask for some proposals and you know, see what cost to initiate that work, but ultimately, again, it would be something that to be prioritized in and among uh, the all the other uh, sidewalk projects that we're looking at. Well, one more thing. Yep. Um, the reason we have trustees as liaisons to our committees is that as we discuss things that we think um, are in the interest of the village, our liaison trustee can have that discussion with the board of trustees if there's anything they can do to move these things along. So I'm hoping that Lou will, as he listens to some of these things, will try, try to pass on to the board of trustees things that they may be able to uh, get done to solve some of these problems. We have a full plate and, and you got to forgive me I'm in two simultaneous meetings here, so I'm a little distracted. The um, um, can can uh, can you give me a list of those things that you want me to uh, uh, talk to them about? Uh, yeah. Um, so Ryan, uh, is, is, who's taking who's taking uh, taking the notes? Michael is. Michael, you're not listening. I'm listening. I'm taking the notes. Right now, we're just looking for you. Right now, we're just looking for um, a push toward looking at a uh, project on Harmon Drive. Um, the space, the road between Harmon Drive and Rockland Avenue, and to see if that, that project can be uh, prioritized, okay. prioritized along with the other projects. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And uh, there's an email. Um, what is it? And and um, you know, it's it's never uh, it's it's always cheaper to go forward as as we went in the 
but I have a question that had to go backwards. My mic wasn't working earlier, uh, <laughs> so please forgive me. Um, I had a, uh, I just had a, had a question and comment for Dan about the uh, Prospect Avenue, um, Benamore Crossing. Can, can you, you know, I, I live, I live right at Mon Monroe, um, uh, at, at, at Heathcote Avenue in Monroe at that corner. Um, so obviously I walk across, I walk across that street every day, uh, uh, at crossing Fenimore. It's, it's definitely, um, uh, we're happy that uh, neighbors are very happy. It's going to be improved. Um, but what, um, that, that is, that's already budgeted. Uh, it, it's in the add on to a grant, oh. another another pro, another contract. And what do you think realistically is the ETA on something like that? Um, it's been expressed that this is a priority to get this done, uh, which is why we are asking uh, some of our existing contractors with contracts with us to uh, you know get us pricing. Um, I think what I've heard from the board is they want to see this implemented, uh, not in you know, many months in, you know, very few months. Okay. So, Thanks. Sorry. And I would have asked that when it was, con you know, at the right, yeah. but my oh. mind was off. Sorry. Yeah, no, absolutely. And like I said, what I'll do is um, in case you have not seen this, I will forward a copy of the original report and the 60% design plans. So you can take a look. Thank, 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 thank you so much. Yep. So going back to your question, Lou, if you take a look at um, an email from March 18th, there's a very heartfelt email from Anna, Anna Meltzer that just describes, I think, perfectly the situation. I, I remember that, yes. That, that just really describes it. So I guess the commission was asking, thinking about putting that as a priority. I, am I correct about that, guys? So, well, do you, do you want to, uh, do you have a recommendation you'd like the board to consider or, or are you just asking us to, to, to look at it separately? I don't know. Um, because you, you guys evaluate it and then you, you send it to us and then, then, then we'll examine it. But uh, um, I don't, I don't know the process. I'm you really think, you think it's Dan's an emergency, said, right? Mm -hmm. No, I don't know if it's an emergency. I mean, Dan's mentioned at least, I don't know, 10 different projects in the capital plan that mm -hmm. have been established and are, and are, are, are priorities. So this, I'm not sure where this particular project Lies. Um, I yes, mean, it's, uh, it's, at, it's at, at its infancy because we still need what a conceptual look at it. How the and it's a big thing to put sidewalks in. So the, I think Dan, we, at this point, we're just going to ask the engineers to take a look at it conceptually. Uh, That's uh, where we're at. Correct, Dan? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'll ask them for uh, a proposal to do a conceptual analysis, okay. and which would involve you know uh, things like uh, traffic counts, pedestrian counts. Uh, analysis of uh, uh, maybe some minor survey work. Um, and, and forgive me, this is a capital program? Yeah, this, this would have to be a capital project, uh, mm -hmm. Lou, because it's a, uh, you know, we, this is a, uh, it will be a sidewalk project uh -huh. along uh, uh, Waverly Avenue. I, I'm and, sorry, and uh, Rock Mockland Avenue. We, and right now we don't have priorities on the capital pro uh, programs, do we? Well, we, we do prioritize projects. Yeah, so um, staff does, I, right? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, yeah, not to put the pressure on the elected officials, but, uh, you know, you said policy, we implement policy. Right. Well, that's one of the problems. With, uh, and, and, and just for the rest of you, we've had a trouble getting the board to focus on, on, on prioritizing this. We're trying to do that. And uh, I, will, I, will, I will bring it up again. Um, uh, the, the, the capital projects have not been prioritized, except by the staff. So we, we, need, to, we need to tackle it. Thank, thank you. you, Lou. Okay. Thank you. And thank you, Dan. We appreciate it. You know, there's a lot involved, a lot of priorities. So totally get it. Yep. So that covers the old business. And we touched on a bunch of the old business as well, um, including the uh, aforementioned Crown Court. If we just uh, quickly go through and we could wrap things up in the next 15 minutes. Um, the old business with the West Street and the stop sign. I know uh, Michael and I, uh, we were trying to get together and walk the area. Um, I've been in that area, I've walked that area, uh, quite frankly, with my dog, um, but I have not set aside like stringent time towards examining the 
car situation over there. We did ask the resident that rode in to dial into the meeting. Um, he wasn't able to attend, but what we could do is follow up with him again and have him dial into the April meeting just to speak to his experience, unless someone on the line did have a chance to walk the area and pay attention to uh, traffic. I can speak to it. I mean, first of all, in the last month's minutes, it looked like there was consensus that it was more enforcement, more enforcement was needed as opposed to putting another stop sign. But I did drive up and down like five times. I used to live around on the corner of Henry Avenue and I walked it. And basically, you know, he requested, Mr. DeVito requested two stop signs. I would right away say definitely not two stop signs because he wanted one on Henry Avenue, like one block away from Park Avenue. So the only other place I would even think about having a stop sign would be at Rose Avenue. And that's just, that would be right after a sign that already says, you know, the curve sign, whatever that sign, whatever that um, logo is. And it says slow to 20 miles an hour. So that to me seems like it, it's good enough. I don't know, like Dan's been saying, to put another stop sign there. I don't know, know how much that's going to do. Plus you're going uphill. So they're not going to, you know, on the, the other way going east is like one or two, there's like two stop signs more. There's more, there's two more stop signs, but that's going downhill. So I think when you're going uphill, it's a factor as well. But again, um, you know, I don't know if it's, if it's necessary. And then plus the, the accident report, according to the minutes last month, there was maybe one accident in the past five years. And that was more like a, more of like an arrest for DUI wasn't an actual crash accident. So again, the, the part, the, the corner where the stop sign I would consider or the commission consider is, is right next to the slow, you know, slow and, and curvy sign. So I'm, I'm leaning against it. I don't know, Brian, if you saw the same thing or not. Sorry, I was on mute there. Um, I know what you're talking about. I think it makes sense to at least slow down traffic, you know, and then I, part of me leans back towards like the um, commentary on how stop signs don't necessarily slow okay. people down. Um, as far as enforcement is concerned, how would we make that recommendation? I guess I would lean on Chris uh, for that one. Like, do we, do, would we put in a request through this channel or kind of how would we do that? Um, now I'm looking on the old business. It says West Street stop sign. Where yeah. Yes. It it's Rose Ave or Rose Lane. No, it's a stop. Well, that, that's a possible place for a stop sign, but the problem is at Park no, Avenue and, and the problem is Park Avenue and West Street. Park Avenue. West Street. There's, there's a stop sign that everyone rolls through. Because oh, it's the top of the hill. Okay. I get top it. of the hill because there's no stop sign between, um, Harrison Avenue and uh, what is it? Halstead Avenue. And Halstead. Yeah. No, there's no stop sign between that part on, on uh, Harrison Avenue and West Street until Park Avenue. Exactly. Okay. They're, passing, recently, they're passing through four, recently, inter right? passing through four intersections. Years. There's only one possible area for a stop sign, I think. Okay. So as far as enforcement, I can bring it back to uh, my lieutenant and forward what you guys, you know, about, you know, getting some officer over there to get people to slow down. If they see the car there enough, then maybe those, you know, pick up on it and stop. We can do that. Yeah, the, yeah, the enforcement would be by Park Avenue and West Street. Okay. I think Park that's Avenue. fair. I think it's a good idea as well, and especially in the short term, because, you know, there's yeah. debate as far as, like, what the stop signs actually do, where to place them, et cetera. But, like, one quick solution to, like, just get present to get people to at least be thinking to slow down is a presence with uh, an officer. So. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Yeah, I can forward that. Okay, no problem. And there is a slowing. I mean, there's a 20 mile. I mean, as Laura was saying, there's, there's a 20 mile an hour sign there. It's there is 20 one miles an hour on on West Street, and then there's that curvy thing. Yeah. So there, I mean, there's definitely indication to slow down. Okay. So, as far as I see, but we can hear what Mr. Devito has to say next month and he, you know he sent a long email with a lot of photos and a lot of explanations so i'm sure he'll want to speak to it or we could just tell him no <laughs> i don't know how we want to proceed we'll give him a chance to speak to it it's all good okay um, this one we touched on earlier the mamaronic ave and i-95 ramp at the crossing guard 
Um, I mean, there's debate as far as like the, you know, it, as far as how many people are actually crossing at that crosswalk, but then admittedly there's consensus that it's downright dangerous for folks to be walking there, especially kids. Um, this was another one, Michael, where we reached out to the residents that submitted the uh, complaint, asking them to dial and speak to it. Um, they didn't have a chance to make it, which is fine. We could follow up with them again. Um, but, you know, I, I've seen, I see plenty of kids passing. I mean, this past weekend, I saw kids crossing through there at night, which was terrifying, to be honest with you. Um, but I can only imagine what it's like if you have young kids that are walking to school along there. But that was part of Katie Guyette's email. I think she did speak, someone did speak to it. Um, yeah, it kind of got email, like interwoven into the. It, it uh, was an email. It seemed like one of her emails said maybe nine kids cross it. I mean, it's hard to. Robert, you, did you get a chance to take a look at that corner to see how many kids were crossing that on the morning? I don't know what's talking about the I 95 the, exit onto Mimeric Avenue. Exactly. Yeah, we did talk about that earlier. So I was there from about eight o'clock to nine o'clock in the morning. And there were only about half a dozen kids all walking with their parents. Okay. Um, I stopped and talked to each one of them. And I think I mentioned that the problem is the cars don't, you know, the cars don't stop for the stop sign. No, just I remember that. Through. I was just wondering when, how many kids cross. So that's a half a dozen. It's not. In fact, I, I, I asked them, and I think a lot of them drive. And I asked them, why don't they take a bus? Why don't they have a bus? And they told me, the buses from the Heights, they're not allowed to have buses. I'm not sure. I didn't quite understand yeah. that, but they said yeah, I think Mamaronic can't only use buses, buses there. You know, I think Mamaronic only uh, buses for, was it more than a mile and a half away from the, uh, yeah. the school? Yeah, yeah Dan, if you're in the Heights, just, yeah. Yes, if you're in the Heights, Dan, my two children are bus to Homics because we live far enough away. They both attend Mamaronic Avenue School. We both had to drive them, or like Robert said, walk them down there. There is no right. bus activity for anybody in the Heights because we're too close to the school. I just remember Which the is fascinating, uh, Andrew, right? Yep. Because, uh, as a parent at with you know, a kid at American School, part of what you and Chris were talking about with the, the traffic congestion, you know, a, 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 a mile and a half. Uh, on, a, on a nice day with a with a six year old might be fun, but on a snow day, uh, it's not even it's not, not possible. Can't yeah. do it. So this is why everyone's driving, which is mm -hmm. this. And and as a as a relative as a new resident, I have I just been here a year now. As a new resident, I guess um, I was surprised that we didn't have more busing to figure out solutions how to get kids to and from school safely which would not just address safety concerns, but it would address the congestion that's also contributing to other safety concerns. Correct. It would cut down on the congestion of American Avenue School alone if they were bused in. Absolutely. Well, I, I can speak a little. I remember back in the day with my kids, we walked all the time from up in the Heights. So it's changed, like you were saying, Ryan, 100%, it's changed. Yep. And maybe it's fewer people walk now because of it's dangerous. I mean, like maybe we don't go based on the number of kids that are walking there. Maybe it's the fact that it's accepted is dangerous and maybe that's should be unacceptable to us. We should be promoting um safer it's it's yeah. of course it's it's part of the self-fulfilling prophecy. Right. People, people don't feel comfortable, so they drive. People don't feel comfortable with the traffic situation, so they drive to school to exacerbate and exacerbate the traffic situation. Mm -hmm. Dan, and guilty as charged. <laughs> and for the group, I, I understand the logistics of getting a crossing hour is probably more difficult than a number of different things, but do we have programs like pilot programs, especially as the weather is getting warmer and more and more people are going to be walking? Like instead of committing like full time, like could we do like, let's say a trial run of a crossing guard at the I-95 crosswalk, uh, crosswalk to incentivize people to walk and then maybe that'll help yeah, the situation. I, I don't know, know enough about the personal compliment. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I would hazard a guess that on any given day, you may have 
one or two crossing guards who are out of work considering their average age is probably uh, a little bit older than uh, uh, me and you know, some of the other, most of the people on this, all the people on this committee will say. Um, so, uh, and then, you know, I, 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 I don't want to, you know, I, I fear creating a false sense of security by having something one day and then not the next. It's, uh, it's just my, it's just like a little voice in the back of my head. Uh, but I, I, I really can't speak to the person I'll compliment. But yeah, go on, Chris. I'd say a couple of things we talked, we touched on earlier. I can check and see if we can issue the tickets because I'm thinking it's the state troopers stop sign. I can see if we can issue the tickets that can be enforced. Because I've always argued about that. When I was on a bicycle unit years ago, I used to go right up there and write tickets anyway. Nice. Um, for the most part, I believe they never came back. But um, I can ask about that. And then the crossing guard, I, that's not a good suggestion because the crossing guard's going to get run over. So <laughs> those people are not looking. And you've seen it, Robert. You said it. They do not look. They start as soon as you come around that bend. They're looking back to the left. So it doesn't matter if there's a Mack truck in front of there, they're going to run into the Mack truck. So forget about a crossing guard. I was trying to say that, I was trying to say that earlier. It just, yeah. you have to put the stop sign back there, crossing guard risk their happen. life. I mean, people coming up the highway are not used to seeing a crossing guard. I even question, has there ever been a crossing guard by an entrance or an exit to a, an interstate highway? No. And like I said, most of the accidents are rear-ended for somebody that actually does stop. And, and it'll come out on the avenue. We go, a car, patrol car will get there and they say, where was the accident? Oh, it was on the ramp. And the state troopers come and take the report. Oh. And, and the problem is the cars that are uh, ramming into the cars in front of them, they don't expect the cars in front of them to stop. That's, nope. that's why all these happen. All these accidents happen. But, and not to throw a monkey in it, a lot of them are residents. So. And uh... Just, just to tattle uh, Shannon for a second. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the crashes, the crashes, not the accidents, the crashes. You're right. We had changed the word. I'm sorry. Crash. <laughs> but, you know, my experience is that most crashes occur at, interse at intersections that are controlled in one fashion or another. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're going to have the most, inter I can tell you right now that the most intersections that the most crashes we have at intersections are going to be signalized intersections. And it's not even going to be close. No, I, I agree with you on that. Dan, I, I think, I mean, this was brought up earlier. I mean, we, we have no control over the, the throughway uh, off ramp, right? I, I, I believe that's the case. Yeah. So, so, I mean, you know, it's almost like it's not a stop sign, but, but, um, uh, you know, they have those, um, those like square, there's like square reflectors that serve as like dimples that kind of bounce your, bounce your tires. Yeah, you know, some some yep. kind of just let people know, like you know, like a rumble strips or something like that. Yeah, rumble a rumble strip, yep. you know, as a as a slowdown because it's not you're not going to break hard, but you know maybe they 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 break soft. I, I don't know if those. I, I have no idea if those are effective. And of course, I mean, what do I know? So, um, but something yeah, along I mean, those lines. Yeah, I mean, I, I think where I've seen like those things before is usually it's on the approach to the stops, uh, an approach to some sort of stop uh, yes, yes. so that you you know it's coming. Like mm -hmm. for instance, if you're on a, you across a bridge and there's a toll, yep. there'll be strips to say, you know, yeah, you once you hear the, 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 the sound of your car hitting yep. the strips, yeah. Well, this item has been on the um, agendas the past three months. So, I mean, Brian, do you think we could we could either get it off and say we're not going to follow through with this to the whatever the public or unless dan you want to look into the uh, brian's idea but i don't mean to be like the chairperson but and i've been looking through the minutes or unless we want to make it an action item to look at what how we could slow up the cars off the exit ramp well i well, think the action we, should we keep this on the agendas i don't i think it's not going to happen the crossing car is not going to happen well, I think we have a suggestion from Chris on enforcement, which I think, like, I don't want to be, like, defeatist and just give up and just be like, well, screw it. It's too dangerous. Kids are going to get hit and cars are going to get into accidents and sorry. Like, no, I don't mean which, that, but I mean the idea of a crossing guard that's been asked, you know. Yeah, no, I months. hear you. 
I mean, I think the closing it out, I agree on removing it. And kind of like the takeaway is that, you know, we'll work with the police department on enforcing what we can. And like, if it's a bigger problem than that, then, you know, we've had the county executive on the calls before and like we could bubble that up and make a recommendation being like, you guys have to do something about this and we'll use this community feedback as evidence for that. Um, but and I don't mean telling them like, you I mean, crossing guard, but just but numbers just don't show it. And like, there's a bigger problem here when it comes to uh, crashes that we're seeing. So right. it's, a, it's a safety, yeah, it's a safety concern more so than yeah. the number of kids crossing. I agree. I agree, Brian. I think that if we, if, you know, we decide to do a, um, uh, enforcement to say that we're going to look at this as an enforcement piece. And then if, if somebody, I don't know if that's you, Dan, if you could just get some clarification, maybe it's Chris about who kind of owns that exit ramp, like official clarification. I I'm pretty sure it's not us. Yeah. Right authority. But it's if right we could just know yeah. that, and then we could well, say. The you know, authority definitely to... owns it. It's the, yeah. you know, are we able to enforce a traffic control device? Yeah. Traffic on control a... device non-village owned road mm -hmm. yeah and and can we make a case can we make a case to uh the state that 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 something like a, rum, a rumble strip is needed because there's a way for yes. enforcement yeah, I mean, yeah. there um i don't know it's worth it's like that's the kind of stuff i i, I like to try to do yeah because it's, right. it's local community speaking to people that have power and it's like if we don't if we just kind of throw up our hands and say, oh, you know, nobody's going to listen to us. Then right. I don't know if I want yeah, to be I mean, in the committee. No, I just meant the crossing guard idea should be. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's out. Cool, Michael. That's, all, that's all I'm trying to say. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, it's not it's Utah. Really I think we try, we ask. And I just, you know, Dan, if you can show us, if you can show us the way a couple of times, I mean, I would be happy to. Yeah. Pick I'll, that I'll, up. I'll look into it. Okay. Thanks. Hey, Dan. Hey, Dan. Yeah. Just a suggestion. I like the rumble idea is a nice idea. Um, would it be possible that you could reach out to the Mid-Hudson Traffic Director for the New York State Thruway Authority? She's located in Pomona, New York. Her name is Heather Garrison. She oversees everything in safety with the freeway. And the Thruway Authority has their own staff on staff engineers. And maybe if you could possibly ask, have they ever tried this technique of putting a rumble strip similar to what you, we, we, all of us, we were all of age. We used to approach toll barriers before they were extinct, had that same rumble. The Rochelle used to have it to, to make sure you didn't snooze off and doze off and accidentally crash into the toll barrier. Yeah, see, I mean, if she's ever, see if she's ever used that any place in the state or is the state very reluctant and very negative results if they've tried it. I mean, the, the true authority covers from here to Buffalo. They've had yeah. to try this someplace else. Well, yeah, good. that's kind of what I'm thinking is that, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, she sees everything for safety. Heather does. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I don't think the issues mm -hmm. that we deal with in the village of Mamaroneck yeah. are unique. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, you know, traffic engineering is our traffic engineering issues, no matter mm -hmm. where you are yeah. and human behavior is human behavior. Mm hmm. Um, maybe unless there's something in the water here. But, uh, True. Absolutely. Yeah. They have those rumble strips up and down 684. So if you veer off to the side of the road, they're in. Yes. The yeah. To wake you up, to wake yeah. you up, to avoid crashing. Yeah. So, I mean, that would be profitable even off the Fenimore Road exit off of the highway to slow you down instead of somebody mm -hmm. blowing right off that exit to the right or to the well, left. I mean, well, the, the, yeah, but the rumble, okay, yeah. Dan, uh, would a, uh, a formal request from the board be helpful? I mean, we could just send them and say, we need something here. What can we do? This is what our, our traffic commission has suge suggested. Um, well, I, I think, it, it, you know, dealing staff to staff is probably the, the best way to start. If, if we find that they are intransigent, then, you know, that's when you get uh, elected Different. officials involved, um, which is what we did with uh, DOT uh back when george was our state assembly person mm -hmm. to get the uh to finally get them to agree to a, a speed zone in front of the uh or school zone in front of the high school yeah we've got some other issues with that property they own there so uh perhaps um perhaps it wouldn't be bad to open up a line of communication but let us know how it goes with the staff to staff yeah 
Sorry. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Chris. Um, thanks, everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan, the Claflin Avenue, I think this one, there was some information perhaps on one of the board meetings. Yeah, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to schedule a meeting with DPW to confirm the measurements and if I need to, you know, have the ask the board to revise that resolution, I will, but uh, okay. I want to confirm everything in the field with DPW. All right, thanks for that sheet that falls up like every other day. Yeah. Um, interestingly enough, she's the neighbor of my boss in person. And <laughs> so uh, I asked my boss to, to tell her to have a little bit of patience and he got a kick out of it. Yeah. Uh, Hawthorne Gardens, um, this one, Dan, this one, you had a resolution open to the board or I think that was the proposed next step to work with uh, Meg and Richard. They were supposed to draft you something to send to the board. Yeah, no, I, I met in the field with them. Uh, I'm going to write up a draft resolution uh, based on that for the traffic commission to review at the next meeting. And then uh, if you recommend that, I'll bring that, I'll bring that back to the board. Thanks, Dan. Um, Crown Court recovered the light at Palmer and Rockland. So Dan, that one, you're going to make a recommendation to uh, take a look at what we can do with the light there, like as far as like what type of project and like work it would be to see what we will at least see what we can do with the light. Um, yeah, no, I, um, uh, I'm looking to do a, a village wide inventory of our traffic signals to see what we can do. It's kind of a uh, outgrowth of a smaller project, which I want to look at for Mamaroneck Avenue uh, for, um, you know, if we can do some better timing and also to- uh, Well, you're breaking up on my end. Uh, improve the, uh, reliability of those signals, tens of thousands of dollars preparing those signals. I'm sorry. So it's uh, a traffic signal inventory. So we know everything to uh, work with him on that. If I can just make a comp, oh, you want to go first, Robert? No, after you. I, I saw in last minute, Dan had an, um, what is it? No, Brian had an idea just to, on Palmer and Rockland Avenue, just to have, I guess, the light going north. Make have that a delayed green light, so we'll give people a chance to make that left turn. I mean, much less expensive than putting in a uh, signal. Yeah. Did you follow? I mean, that would. Yeah, no, yeah, I know. But the, the delayed that's green that's light. Part of the, what can the what can the signal do based on the hardware that controls it? Well, that's hard. It's hard to do to just delay. No, no, the, the, it seems simple. Every no, every, well, it's not as simple because every traffic signal is has hardware that controls it. Okay. And the hardware operates under certain parameters, and if it can do, it can do certain things, and it can't do other things. So, uh, I don't know if that's something that is a feasible suggestion. Until we go in there, look at the hardware, and say, yes, it can, or no, it can't. Does anyone? Okay. Has anyone I, stood there in the corner in the morning to take a look at how bad it is? Because the way that just from the email from this man. I got his name. It, it seems really bad to make that left turn in the morning. So maybe no, not. It's not. impossible. You can't literally make the left, like without risking. Like <laughs> if you try to jump, like the traffic coming the other way, then you can do it. But like I've sat there for like the, the ten minutes plus, just like waiting and waiting. Like and it's sometimes you might get like a bus, like or something that's so it's. It's crazy intersection. So these people are trying to get to the Maronac Avenue High School entrance on Boston Post Road or just the back entrance by the gym? Back entrance on Palmer. Yeah, yeah. trying to get on right. Palmer. Where like, the gym is. Yeah, Palmer Gym is. No, Palmer, up up the hill to where the gym is. As yeah, it's actually, you make the left on Rockland, the right on Carpenter or Woodbine. Yep, to the gym, got it. I live at the corner there. You also have the problem as cars are making the left turn onto Rockland to go up. You have cars coming out of the gas station. Mm. I, yeah, I've seen a, it, it's a nasty location. I'm not sure how you fix that. I have one question for Dan. 
Uh, Dan, are you including the uh, stoplights at the uh, Delancey and Boston Post Road, especially making the left turn coming down Delancey onto Boston Post Road? That is an awful, awfully dangerous location. Well, uh, well that's the that's the state DOT's uh, traffic lights. So, I mean, if there's a request about that, that would have to be forwarded to them to uh, take a look at. Oh, is why yes, Robert, you're absolutely right. I I we walk the dog there twice a day. Um, without a doubt, once a week, either my wife or I say oh, we almost got hit. I mean, the light changes and people just go right through. And it's a it's a little bit weird of an it's um you have the and two, I don't blame people, but well, I, it's I, an offset intersection between the Lancy and Orienta. So you have those two uh separate signals. And um, you know they're they're phased a little bit differently to uh, uh, you know facilitate the traffic movement out there. I, I cross then, that corner all the time as well. And in Delancey and and Palmer, I'm sorry, boss, boss, when you're making the left, I wait for the walk signal. I wait diligently for that walk signal. I walk, but the cars are still allowed to make a left onto me because right, right, Robert. <laughs> I'm waiting for the walk signal. I have the walk. Supposedly, cars have to wait, but they're coming right in. So it doesn't matter whether I wait for the walk signal or not. Right? I mean, that, I guess that happens at other spots too. But that is um. Well, I mean, it's pretty looked at. Well, I mean, once you're, you know, once once you're in the crosswalk, you have the right. They're supposed to yield to you. Oh, I, I know that, but they, they, they move pretty quickly. That's a risky game. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, why should I wait for the walk sign when I'm going to get hit anyway? Chicken crosses the road. Let's wait for the results there. Um, okay, I'm sorry about that. I, I got uh, got the you know once you're in a, a crosswalk, you have the right of way. Um, granted, I you know I tell this story to people. I was I was hit in the uh, Mamaroneck Avenue uh, Prospect East Prospect crosswalk when I had the right of way. So yeah. Um, right. So, um, yeah, it, and it's it's not really feasible to do an all-way stop at that intersection because it's it's so long that to provide the amount of time is yeah the it have to be a you know you know thirty to forty second uh, you know all-way stop and then that would have a cascading impact in all the other intersections. Um, yeah, my internet connection is becoming unstable. So Nick's I, gotten better. No, no, it got better. Yeah. You faded it out before. Okay, I'm sorry. All well, good. Dan, the uh, next item, the Tompkins Avenue crosswalk, that one you mentioned you were following up with DPW as that has become faded. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, part of it is I think uh, we're still waiting on our new uh, paint machine. Uh, it was... Uh, destroyed as a result of flooding at DPW. So, and uh, there are logistical issues in getting uh, uh, these types of items nowadays. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Uh, the Taylor's Lane, Boston Post Road, uh, you mentioned uh, a follow up with uh, DPW to trim the bushes. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll follow up. I, I didn't get a chance to, uh, to do that. All good. And then the uh, North Barry, um, you mentioned the follow up with some of the residents there. Yeah, I, I will uh, I'll work on that. I've been a little tied up with budget the last uh, last month. All good. No, I apologize for that. No worries at all. All right, that covers all the business. No, go on, Robert. There are two items that we covered in the past that aren't on the old business. I just want to make sure that yep. there is Carroll Avenue and the chopped restaurant across from the high school. Are those resolved? Could we figure out what to do there? I think, and Dan, keep me honest on this. We were going to investigate um, potential the speed sign or what it would be involved in having the speed sign or um, yeah. the flashing um, light sign. Yeah, I, I asked uh, for some uh, recommendations and uh, 
pricing options from our traffic engineer. So I'll, I'll follow up on that. And what was the second item, Robert? Carroll Avenue, we were going to add some more controls to explain about the one changing from a two-way street to a one-way street. Carroll Avenue is that street where uh, it starts as a two-way and then you get to, I forget the name of the street, becomes a one-way to Boston Post Road. And there was some confusion about making it clear the uh, direction of traffic. Mm -hmm. At, at, at Lorena, it's a one way between the right. Boston Post right. and Lorena. Mm -hmm. The police chief had some some good ideas about uh, what to add there to, um, so there's no confusion about uh, direction where to go. And maybe we can refer back to some of our minutes. I think we wrote down a number of her suggestions. Maybe we can go back and check them out. Mm -hmm. Uh, speaking of minutes, and you know, we, we could do this on a go forward at the beginning of the meeting, but uh, I know there was some back and forth that we're going to do at the beginning of the end, but um, I think Doesn't now matter. is a good time. Yeah. Let's, uh, we have three meeting minutes. We have December, January, and February. Um, I want to make a motion to approve the December minutes. Uh, motion to approve the December 2021 minutes. And then I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think we have consent. I think Laura and Andrew, we just need a, a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you improve the December 2021 minutes. After when I, I read, uh, an email that stated that because I wasn't part, a participant in those minutes that I couldn't vote. I wasn't, I, I wrote that. I wasn't sure. Dan, can you clarify whether you have to be present at a meeting to vote on the minutes? You, you do not have to be present at the meeting to vote on the minutes. What you're affirming is that that's a, and, and this is your comfort level, Laura. Wait, the, the minutes you're voting to say, yes, these are an accurate reflection of the discussion that took place at that meeting. Well, I'm comfortable. There, there's no, you're, you're not legally prohibited from no, voting just, on the minutes. No, I and there are no I, legal consequences for approving, right? Correct. No, I was just, I was just trying, following yeah. um, email directive or suggestion, but if I reviewed them and thumbs up, how about that? <laughs> you won't want to see the repercussions of a thumbs down if you weren't even on the commission. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm going to make a motion to approve the January minutes. We just need a second. Uh, I'll make a uh, motion to approve. The January, not that it matters, but they they call me Michael Stark a few times in the yes. January minutes. Yeah. It might be it's, it's a hybrid. It's a hybrid. It's is that a, your, is that you're my brother. <laughs> you're my brother. Um, <laughs> you did those minutes. I like it. Um, I can I can resubmit that that. Uh, I don't know if it matters. Yeah, just. Um, I don't want to hold up the minutes for that, so I will. Yeah, don't. I think we'll figure uh, it out. Okay, and then uh, all in favor? Thank you. Okay, and then lastly, the I want to make a motion to approve the February minutes. Second. And all in favor? All right, perfect. I'll let... Um, Alina and Robert know that they're officially approved. Um, all right, that covers it. I know and it's late, so I think, and we're set to meet again in two weeks. Uh, go on, Robert. So, Brian, your minutes were different from my minutes and Brian, but I like yours better. Uh, it's easier to do, it's easier to follow, less work, and I, I ask somebody what the format of minutes and it's whatever you want it to be. So I like the way I like your minutes over my minutes. And, you know, if anyone wants to go forward and do it that way, I, I, I'm in favor of that. So what you were saying, Brian's who's better who has better minutes, Brian or Ron? I didn't say better minutes. I didn't say better. I wasn't saying. I'm making it easier, light here. Easier, easier to take. Which one did you, you like that seemed easier? 
The Call them bridged and unabridged. <laughs> okay, so I have to put the minutes together. So I'm praying that the Zoom video is going to be complete. Just do the it's, best you can. It's, Don't it's worry. A very, it's a very tough. Yeah, it's a tough job. I was reading some other com commission minutes, and like ours are much better. <laughs> like, my my wife did the minutes for the tree committee. Hers are just, I mean, she's a journalist. That is brief. So, I, I mean, there's a lot of information here. That's yeah, and it's hard, and it's yeah. Do the best but that you can. I, I think it's important that we have detail because when we come back to uh, particular locations, we want to know what we discussed, what was recommended, what, and if you don't write that down, you're not going to remember. No, it's fair. It's fair. I mean, it's like if you put down every detail, it's going to be a long, I'll give it a shot. Okay. We're appreciative of the fact that people try. Maybe like, you know, the second go around, you know, we could criticize you, Michael. Think, uh, <laughs> but the fact that anyone that, you know, the bunch of us have done it so far. It's, you know, I have a lot of, I have a lot of samples and I'm sure Robert's rules, there's a way to do minutes. I mean, Robert's yeah. rules would have it. I don't know. Don't, don't do it that way though. Robert's <laughs> rules? No. Why not? It's, Why? it's not necessary. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's not necessary. I mean, yeah, you, you, you're not the United States Congress. Yeah. <laughs> I, as, no. But, um, Come on, I'm, I'm a transportation commissioner. Come on. <laughs> I, I would, I would like to make a motion to adjourn. Yeah, let's. <laughs> we could talk more about some of the because I know we had some good dialogue over email. We can continue that, but as far as like other planning, like it's been a long meeting. Long this day. is a great meeting. Yeah. Can I just add one thing to kind of put this in perspective? We covered a lot. It's oh, amazing yeah. how many. And I just want everyone to understand who wasn't uh, uh, who are recently added to this commission. Except for today, the last eight months of traffic committee, we only met three times. That's why you have this long list of oh, backlog. Stop. As we go forward, we won't have, hopefully we won't have this long list of things to cover. We'll, we'll be able to cover things more efficiently and, and do a much better job. It's, we didn't have meetings for the pandemic and we didn't have quorums. Hopefully that won't happen again. Your mouth yeah, to God's ears. <laughs> That's it. And the community's engaged and I, I think they appreciate the follow-up and asking to be involved. And it helps a lot having them speak firsthand about what's going on. And it gets some skin in the game from the resident instead of just firing an email off and hoping for the best. So, and the fact that you showed up, thank you everyone that has made trips so far. And, you know, as the weather's gotten better and as the pandemic hopefully has uh, phased out or is phasing out, then these types of site visits are become more of the norm. So appreciate it. So Ryan, feel free, make the motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I second. second. My third. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. We appreciate it. Thank you, uh, Chris. Thank you, thank you Andrew. Thank you, Dan. Thank, thank you, you, thank you everyone. Good night. Have a great day. Have a great night. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you.